Hello, I'm Morris Kohansky, Wilderness Living Skills Instructor. Uh, I have uh, spent uh, about 40 years instructing in this field and over the years I began to develop a preference for certain things that I want to carry which I might be considered valuable items to have in a survival kit. Now a survival kit must do about three things. One, I think it must help you to be able to cope with the cold when you're trying to sleep. It must help you deal with your need to find uh, and collect water and any type of medical conditions. Now if you're highly trained the forest will provide all of the medicines and all of the first aid stuff and if you're highly trained you likely will not really need to have a immense first aid kit. The situation is that in my livelihood of um, um, 40 some years, I've had two medical problems. One, someone had an appendicitis problem and another, um, people were wrestling and somebody broke a bone in their arm. And in 40 some years of going to maybe 15,000 students, that's about the only real medical emergency that I ever encountered where someone on the course had to seek medical attention. Now basically, if you're dressed properly, the kit uh, becomes a kind of a minor concern and if you're not dressed properly then your kit maybe has to help you out more. And basically I like to be able to light a fire under any circumstance and the device here that gives hundreds of fires, a very dependable, invincible, one of the most concentrated forms of lighting fire is the metal match. After the metal match you might find that maybe the knife is the indispensable tool that will allow you to cut all the things you want to cut to build shelters to to do whatever. So the knife and the knife and the uh, rod here uh, should be fixed in such a way that you get a really good spark because you have prepared the back of your knife to be able to do that. Another thing that is extremely convenient is a pot and the pot becomes your container for your kit and the pot reflects how much stuff you want to bring with you. Normally I can get by with a pot half the size but it's not as comprehensive and so on. So in goes the rod, in goes the knife. We have talked about those. The next thing you might find, although the clothing here is uh, high up, you might find that uh, um, your shelter. Here is a tube tent for two dollars you can buy a tube tent uh, that uh, is a marvelous big sheet of this shiny mylar which is one of the most advanced modern materials you could ever use for shelter building. It goes in here. If you're going to create a window to capture the, the um, uh, warmth in your shelter, a clear polyethylene, something like that often costs a dollar in the dollar store. And then comes in a variety of cordage. The, this one here would produce a ridge pole. This one here is for lashing. Now paracord is ideal if you can find it. Uh, I have no, no problem there. I have lots but I thought that uh, 200 pound test kite string might uh, just about suffice. And another thing that I have recently um, acquired a great deal of affection for is a kind of a ribbon like tape material called mule tape. And this is rated at 2,500 pounds tensile strength as compared to 550 pound uh, tensile strength. This is pack strap material and winching material and other applications like snowshoe um, uh, tying. And then an optional thing that I don't really get too tied up in knots is the packet here that has a pair of tweezers, a whistle, a compass and some wire maybe uh, 10 arm spans of wire, sewing thread and sewing needle and you find and a signal mirror and it goes in there and if there's any space left we take this jacket. Now sometimes I have a jacket it's called double stuffed and it will be stuffed in here and I've done it before you know, and uh, I keep working at it till it's completely gone inside here. Now I also like to carry a saw blade and the saw blade is usually in a special belt so that you're carrying it around your waist and your waist will determine the length of the blade. 
you can see that there's an extra foot here, but your blade should be no shorter than this. That a blade that's shorter than nose to fingertip is um, getting a little short. The definition of a survival saw is something that'll fell a hug size uh, tree. And the means, the, the bolts that go in the ends, the string is already in here for tensioning, and you build the buck saw when you need it, and then you find that life becomes very easy because you can cut wood into uh, small sections so readily because you've brought a saw and this is something that is conveniently stored. Now there are wire saws and there are saws that look like chainsaws. They do not work like a like a good sweet saw blade uh, does and I would say that this is, I prefer to go this way. And that's the type of kit that I tend to feel comfortable with with regard to camping and survival uh, 12 months of the year.